What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Run It Up. Today, very special session for you guys, playing some 510 No Limit Texas Hold'em on UltimatePoker.com. Uh, since the last time you guys watched, if you didn't see yesterday's episode, I did start the session yesterday. Uh, in the meantime, it's been about... 10-ish uh, minutes since then, and uh, actually been a pretty rapid-fire 10 minutes uh, in that period of time. I managed to get it in with Ace-King against Deuces preflop for 500 and lost. I also got it in with Ace-Queen uh, with the Ace of Diamonds against 8-6 uh, of Spades on an 8-7-Deuce All-Diamonds board. So we're actually a favorite there uh, with the Ace-Queen with the Ace of Diamonds. Uh, so we had a flush draw into over cards against just a pair. Didn't win that either, though. So I'm actually in for 1750, I believe, at this point. So, uh, stuck about $1,200 right now, but it's really, you know, what's that? It's a, you know, a buy-in and some change. So, let's see if we can't do some recovery here. I think if we stacked either, now that we're in stacking position right now, but a couple double-ups and we'll be just fine. I'm not too concerned. So, here on the turn, we could bet again. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. He will call us with worse. Four, five, flush draws, worse sixes once in a while, pocket fours, pocket fives. I'll just keep talking about the hands he could have called us with while the, hand, the next hand is being dealt. So, stuck a little bit of money right now, but I'm still having a really good time because anytime you can play some 510 on the internet in America is a lovely and glorious day. Win or lose, I'm just happy to be able to click some buttons and, uh, and put some gamblings to work here on the internet. That's right. So, uh, I feel for all you guys out there who want to grind but can't. Uh, one day. One day soon. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. So the plan today is I'm going to play this session for probably another 30 minutes, then call it a day. We'll be back on regular Run It Up tomorrow. I'm not playing for any Run It Up money for this. This was always pure my own money. I would not play, given that we have $703 because I lost a uh, sit-and-go yesterday. So it's only uh, $703 as of right now in the bankroll. We'll have to do some running it up sooner or later. But for the time being, let's see if we can't run it back to up or even uh, for myself for this session. So our opponents here, we talked a little bit about this guy yesterday. I played with him before a couple times recently. Um, I think he plays pretty well. He does some things. Uh, he does some good pressure things. He does some good preflop things, does some good postflop things. I think he plays very reasonably. And uh, money beats, uh, once again, we talked about it yesterday, but my brain as far as like poker online screen names, without, without the ability to take notes. Oh, can we take notes? I didn't know you could even do that in Ultimate Poker. Wow. We're, le we're learning things together here. Oh, wow. Can I do it on myself, too? Oh, yeah. I definitely want to be orange. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at that. Look how pretty that all looks right now. Wow. <laughs> I should just conclude the episode right here. How can it get better than that? That is, that is some technology right there. Uh, so, uh, my plan, uh, my plan against these two guys, hopefully we'll run it even. I think I already talked about that, didn't I? You know, let's just try to win some money. Shut up, Jay Carver. Let's just try to win some bucks. I'm with you. Let's see if we can't. So, my strategy on the button is going to be to open probably about two, two and a half X. I feel like, uh, at this point, because we have about half stack, I don't think raising much bigger than that makes a lot of sense, you know. Uh, I don't think these guys are going to make critical mistakes to 3X that they wouldn't make to 2X or two and a half X. Going to fold hands like this. Probably going to play... Uh, I would imagine about uh, 8 out of 10 hands on the button. So we'll probably end up folding about 2 out of 10 times when we're on the button. Hands like 5 deuce, hands like 10 3, offsuit, you know. Uh, I think I'm going to play pretty much every suited hand from the button as far as the small blind goes. Uh, the small blind is an interesting spot for us. The small blind is probably the most interesting uh, dynamic of the three. So. Uh, this, in the small blind, sometimes we have to deal with our opponent who's opening, and sometimes we have to deal with this guy who will be in the spot after us in the big blind. So we'll talk, I guess, a little bit more about that when we start hitting uh, the small blind. But to me, I think the most interesting strategic spot is in the small blind here. And this time, though, we are in the big blind with two threes. Decided to call a 2.2x two, 2 raise on the button. He decides to check it back. Uh, I kind of feel like this hand is one of those that I feel like is too weak to check call. I don't want to check, and I, I don't want to check call this, but I think betting ourselves is okay. He'll actually call us with worse sometimes, and uh, as well as once in a while folding slightly better. Not very much better, mind you, but once in a while he'll fold slightly better than pocket threes. Do we win? Two threes. No. <laughs> Not this time, I'm afraid. The 6-5 offsuit rules the kingdom this this day. That's right. Very excited about next week's debut of Survivor. That's right. I'm an enormous Survivor fan, and uh, next season is going to be awesome. I'm really excited. Last season was one of the best Survivor seasons ever, so uh, I'm really excited about this one. I'm actually going to be previewing this upcoming season. Uh, actually, by the time you guys see this, 
Uh, <laughs> okay, I actually just previewed this upcoming season. Sorry, technology production is hard. Ooh, 222? I think Ice might go all in here. Because he's opening, he's opening like 80% of his hands for 22 on the button, right? So we have an ace, and I have $500, and I don't really give a hoot. I think I should just go all in. If money beats folds, I'll just give him a run for it. Damn it. It's actually even way more brutal for for Flurry against Money Beats because against me it's like well whatever he's getting three to one he just has to call. This is just like punishing this poor guy. This is a two hundred dollar you know punishment. Oh yeah, Ace, come on. Oh, give it to the guy. Give it to the guy who's misclicked. Come on. Oh, come on, the King Ball. Let's see it. King Ball. Come on. Wow, my sweats are not doing good this video. Thankfully, thankfully Pocket Eight shoved because if the Eights hadn't shoved, we would have shoved and lost to Ace Jack. So. He saved us $500 right there that I uh, would otherwise be giving to that fella. Hopefully this doesn't break the game. No, it does not. Pocket Kings, hello. Uh, I'm going to raise here because I feel like limping against a guy who could have just lost that, that very tilting pot. Like I feel like would be a pretty big mistake. So going to bet half pot seems like a reasonable thing to do. Not looking to give this guy any reason to fold. Don't want to bet too much. Don't want to check. You know, I think, I think this hand is going to be probably just bet, bet, bet. If I had to guess, uh, I think once again, we'll bet like 70. If he calls 70, we'll have like 360, 370 left. There'll be 250. I guess it's a little too small. 80. So he puts 80 in, 280. We have 360. Yeah, it seems okay. I mean, it's obviously just a little bit different, but we have to kind of think about that to some degree. That's not the best of rivers for us. Any five making a straight, but it doesn't have a lot of fives. You know, ace five, three five, eight five, six five. Uh, four five, you know, but that would beat us on the turn. So the question is, with a pot size bet left, do we shove? Do we check? Do we bet like this? Do we bet small? Like, what do we do here? Well, I'm not sure. I don't know. All right, I check. I will be check calling. Give him a chance to bluff. Give him a chance to, I guess, we reduce our damage in some degree. I didn't think he was gonna call us if we just shipped it or bet a lot with eight. Maybe I missed out on some value there. I feel like uh, my river no limit decisions have been a little bit not necessarily perfectly in tune lately. I haven't been playing no limit besides on ultimate. You guys have probably seen 98% of my of my no limit sessions on run it up in, in the past few weeks. And I just feel like maybe they're not like perfectly in tune for like this online poker environment somehow because I feel like you know the sample size is obviously very small because you really shouldn't be making evaluations, conclusions, judgments, or any any of those related words uh, with a sample size of like seven, which is what my sample size is. But uh, I still feel like my river my river checking versus betting instincts when I've had like uh, probably but not definitely best hand have not necessarily uh, netted me the best of results. Just something to be aware of. You know, I've I've talked to you guys a lot before about how I feel like uh, self self uh, awareness is a very important thing in poker like self consciousness of being aware of like not just you know whether not just about evaluating your game and like am I doing this too often is this not working real well for me like you know there's a lot of there's a lot of noise in poker and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use Nate Silver's uh, book title as my <laughs> as my analogy here there's a lot a lot of noise and the only way to really understand the to really get a clear picture of the signal and to really you know, to really understand what's going on is to have an honest understanding and dialogue with yourself. Like I feel like very often poker players don't have a, an honest understanding of what they're willing to risk or, you know, why they're playing poker in the first place or, you know, I think there are a lot of different like logic and mental leaks that can be found in uh, poker games that in people's poker mindsets that impacts their actual poker game. That's right. If you want to hear me say more words like that in, in sentences that are, you know, long and run on, I believe I use phrases like a cosmic crossroads of fortuitiveness, of fort, wow, of fortuitous, fort, fortuit. What, what was the word I used? I feel like there was another syllable in that word. Or two, it to no, that's not it. I'm thinking of it. I'm, I'm combining two words. I think I'm just trying. I'll just go with my fortunes, you know. It's a crossroads of fortuitousness. Fortuit. Fortu I don't even remember. That's why you write in print. 
You know, that's why you leave the you leave the spelling to Remco. You just let it out there. But if you want to see the most in depth interview that I've ever done, I talk uh, I talk probably it's probably going to be the most in depth thing I ever do. Honestly, as far as my early background for my life, my poker life, all that stuff, I had a really in depth interview with Remco. You can check it out on iGaming.org. I'll try to link it also in the uh, I'll try to link it also in the comments or sorry in the description below. But we talk about. I mean, everything about my early life, my getting into poker, taking taking shots at the nosebleeds, uh, some of the early trials and tribulations, the people who I felt like really contributed to my poker game, and more. So if that sounds interesting to you, check it out, iGaming.org. There'll be links uh, both on my Twitter. This is what Twitter apparently means. <laughs> Let's go to Twitter. I like that joke better with the sound. Let's go to Twitter. <laughs> I like that joke a lot better than the air joke. If I was just, you know, that's just my feelings on it, though. You're the Run It Up producer, as we've talked about before, the horribly underpaid producer of Run It Up, because what you love is what you see. If you didn't love what I was doing, I would do something else. I mean, maybe, probably, probably do something else. So that's it. You should let me know. Do more air keyboards or do more sound keyboard? I don't know. Very important Run It Up decisions. Unfortunately, not a very important run-up decision here. I guess it's not even really a run-up decision because it's a Jay Carver decision, but folding is the answer nonetheless. I guess I could try to see if there's more games going. We have done these cross-game sessions now for the last two videos, so I guess we could keep doing them now, huh? Or I guess I should say this and the last video. Let's see what else is running here on the Ultimate Pokers. We could play some... Could play some uh, very small stakes PL08. Nah, that ain't me. Could play some. Uh, could play some uh, fifty cent a dollar. I feel like I've been playing fifty cent a dollar for like years. I'm over it. <laughs> I want to play higher stakes. You know, set the kid free. Let the kid get out of his cage and just. Oh, maybe we can play a uh, heads up PL08 sit and go. How does that sound? Yeah, I didn't like it either. I was just, I was just checking. If I could pick, if I could pick a game to play right now, I would play five ten PLO. That would be what I would play if I could pick a game to play right now. But unfortunately, no one ever wants to play high stakes PLO with me. If you live in Nevada and you want to play some PLO, please deposit on Ultimate Poker, and I, you can literally schedule appointments with me to play PLO. I will play, I will play anything. I'm not even saying I don't think I'm a favorite. I just want to gamble. You know, the kid just needs the fix and. You know, you're the fixins. Maybe. Maybe you could be it. Boy, me and Flurry are just getting whacked over here. We were just having a fun little time, playing heads up. Next thing you know, Money Beats swoops in, puts us in the pickle jar, locks it up. I guess Flurry just recovered a little bit there. Okay, he's probably less tilted now. Let's make him uh, blue. He's he's cooled down a little bit. And you're, you're heating up, so yeah, you'll be red now. <laughs> I'm still just orange. I guess I should be a different color than orange. How about green? All right. <laughs> anyway, these are these important run it up moments, I guess. You know, I didn't even know you could change colors with people on Ultimate. That's a brand new thing to me. Who had any idea you could do that? Can't do player notes, but I guess we can do custom color, by the way. Is that a real thing? What does that even mean? Custom color. Can I just pick money beats? Is that a color? No. <laughs> and now he only has one card. Did I just delete a card from him? I'm not even sure it's happening anymore. All I know is Uncle Lorenzo is not happy with me. Get back to playing! Alright, that's not a good Uncle Lorenzo impression either. I'm very sorry about that. I have to work on my Uncle Lorenzo impression. He's actually been very nice to me every time that we've met. I, I cannot, uh, I have nothing but respect for, for uh, Mr. Mister Fertitta, so please. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, as you guys might be able to see, we've, uh, we've added Uncle Lorenzo to the wall. The wall of fame. The power wall. You know, just seemed like a, I, I needed some inspiration for when I was running it even. You know, we've been getting beat up a little bit. I just needed something to be like, you know, talk about a guy who ran it up. He's only got 22 casinos, the UFC, Ultimate Poker. Who even knows what the heck else he's doing? Come on. If that's not a man, if that's not a man who's, who defines run it up, I don't know. I don't know who would. A set of hearts, very pretty hand in the small blind. We'll be putting a raise in, I'm pretty sure, regardless of what happens. Seems like that is what has occurred. Off to the flop we go. Interesting. I think I'm going to bet pretty small here. Like 24, 26, 25. 
All right, boom. I think we're stuck to like a thousand dollars, something like that. But uh, whatever. I feel like I feel like we couldn't have done anything this session. If you look at if you look back at the big pots this session, which of which you guys missed two of them, I actually was recording during the first one, but uh, because I was recording the sit and go first, I never changed tables. So there's just like six minutes of me talking on darkness. So <laughs> I don't think you guys would love that video. Uh, it's like running up in the dark. It's <laughs> running up after dark for real. Uh, ooh, should we just like cold format this? We did do this with ace with ace queen before. I think that's just a little silly. If we had more money, I would love to, love to, love to, love to. But I, I think it's just a little on the silly side, given that he is also behind us. Uh, we're pretty sure if he just has two sevens, I don't think he folds something like that, you know. So short stack. By the way, I couldn't even reload if I wanted to because this is a nine-handed table. So uh, I would love to uh, have more, but. Pretty glad we didn't get involved with the 10-5 of diamonds, given the three cards that have been thrown out there on the flop. Interesting shove. Uh, I actually would think that if he had, uh, I mean, I know he has like a little more than pot size bet, but I would think if he had something that was like super nutted, he would probably not do that. Like if he had quads, there's no chance he shoves, right? So uh, what does he have then? He probably has like, you know, aces maybe, but aces, even aces, why would you shove? Why wouldn't you just bet like, you know, half pot or something? Like, you know, you want the other guy to make mistakes, right? So in my opinion, I think uh, he probably doesn't have aces either. So it's like, what does he have? He's like ace king, could have ace king. Ace king would be a perfectly reasonable hand for him to have in that spot. He also could have ace-king in this spot because we limped and he raised and he checked back flop. Don't think he has that hand for sure, but it's possible. Gonna start with the bet for a straight up value. I would like to be paid $40 because I think I have the best hand. He agrees with me but does not pay me my $40, which I guess is okay as well. Over to the button we go. Almost certainly going to be raising, but wow, another fold. Brutal. Jay Carver, why are you being such a nit with your own money? That's what the people want to know. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Leprechaun hat's a little tight fitting today, feels like. Very tight, very tight play today. <laughs> I don't even think it's been that tight. I've got it in a lot. You guys just haven't necessarily seen it. We got it in with Ace King against Deuces, didn't win that. Got it in with uh, Ace Queen against 8 6 on the 8 7 4 all diamonds board when we had the Ace of Diamonds, didn't win that. We're a small favorite there. Once again, by the way, if you play poker and uh, and you're just like getting into it, you're just new, you know, you know, you're just not sure what to do, uh, you know, you're not necessarily like completely fully absorbed into like the poker math of things. I highly encourage when you get into situations, or if you see situations even on like Run It Up or a TV show, a poker TV show or something like that, I highly encourage you taking the hands and running the equities, and I highly encourage you customizing them and tinkering with those equities so you can kind of see like what would happen if things are a little bit different. So especially in PLO, I'm still doing that in PLO right now, but even in Hold'em, if you go, oh, well, what would have happened? Uh, so he got in with 8-6 and you had ace-queen. What happens if you don't have the ace of diamonds? What happens if he has a six of diamonds? What happens if he has, you know, whatever? And you play with that until you kind of come with a little bit more of an understanding. All of a sudden, it's a party. Looks like one player sticking around. DNA. Never seen that guy before. Probably because he just escaped prison, seems like. Interesting flop here. He's only got 560 bucks left, 140 in the pot. We could check back, but I feel like we probably have the best hand here somewhat often. About half the pot. Let's see how he feels about that. I think I'm okay with that result. Uh, we could have checked back, but... Uh, I don't really like that. I feel like we want to just start getting value immediately. If he has a hand like 10s and 9s, he doesn't fold right then and there, right? Because he has a gut shot and a set draw. Uh, if he has a, a single jack, like, you know, I guess we beat or we lose to good jacks, we beat the bad jacks. Uh, he could have a queen, kings, or aces. Those hands are never folding no matter what. But uh, I still think generally betting against the protecting against the ace kings, the ace x's of the world, which I guess don't need much protection against. Uh, I'm going to raise it up here against the post for sure. Could even be at 50 actually, I think, but 40 seems all right. If Flurry re raises, certainly not going to fold, even though we have the worst position. Heads up, or is it be a th will it be a three way tonight? Hmm, looks like DNA is in for the three way. Okay, so I think I'm actually going to check this. Now, I feel like I've gotten these decisions wrong very often in the last few days, but I'm going to check this one here because I feel like these two players, surely somebody <laughs> will bet. Okay, okay, fine. We'll do it this way. If that's what we have to do, we'll do it this way. I bet half the pot. 
Looks like Flurry just had nothing. Does DNA have anything? Anything. No. <laughs> what can you say? What can you do? I check. No one wants to bet. I turn a full house. Nobody has a heart, a nine, a jack. Or like queen, Even like king, queen. No. Nobody has that hint. I bet half the pot. What can I do? They just know. The kids are too good. I swear, I check to see if I'm live streaming at least like four times an episode. I go, recording locally? Okay. How do they know? I don't, I don't get it. How do they know all the time? I kind of miss streaming. I don't know how many of you guys were around for the streaming days, but I, I'm starting to miss it a little bit. It's been a few months now, not streaming like even like the Poker News podcast, not streaming anything for a few months now. So I'm starting to miss the streams. I think I might have to find ourselves doing some stream stuff, uh, some stream stuff sometime soon. Also coming up sometime soon, Run It Up Reno. We uh, recently put out a video, if you guys didn't see, talked about it yesterday a little bit, but we put out a video showing you guys a little bit about what we did in Reno back in May. Uh, we had only about like uh, 25 to 30 people total there. It was really last notice, though. We only had like 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, 10, yeah, 10 minutes would be really last, last minute, but we had like 10 days notice, so it was, it was hard to make it a really big event. This time, though, we know, uh, you know we have a much bigger plan ahead as far as what's going on. We're a month out of the event right now. Now, and we'll be announcing the the full schedule, the events, all the details. Everything will be coming literally tomorrow. Uh, episode 225, we'll start talking about everything, uh, all my plans, the exact dates, why I think it'll be awesome. Some of the cool promotions and stuff will come in a little bit, but we'll have you guys starting to get a, to to get aware of what's going on uh, with that event. It's going to be so awesome. I hope as many of you guys that can make it come. We had so much fun last time. It was a, it was a great event. There'll be tremendous opportunities for both. The value, learning, enlightenment, self-improvement, uh, enrichment. Do we say enrichment yet? That's another big one. Uh, so if those things sound cool, and you can do them with both me and D Moon Girl, maybe Dan O'Brien, uh, Martin Campman is probably going to come back. I'm pretty sure. You know, he has to defend his title after all. Uh, and some more special guests. You should come on down to Reno. It'll be an awesome time. Uh, the event, uh, we haven't announced the exact uh, days yet, but the tournament series uh, that we are working with in Pepper Mill because there's a full, there's a full uh, sheet of tournaments going on as well while we're there that we're kind of syncing up with. So that schedule is already out running October 17th to October 26th. I'll be there the whole time. There'll be events going on the whole time. Uh, there'll be a concentrated run it up period that won't be the whole time, of course, but I'll be there the whole nine days. And for anybody else that wants to hang out with me, there'll be some cool things going on there as well. The whole time. Don't worry. In this hand, okay, looks like uh, we could bet here again twice. Could also just check call. Don't think folding is ever... I don't think folding is really uh, going to happen here just because of how good our hand is. We do have like a one card hand, which is not really a thing that is an awesome thing to have, but uh, I'm not going to fold yet. I'm going to at least start with a call. If the river is a club, I'm certainly check calling. If the river isn't a club, then we have a decision to make. River to straight draw. Hello. Check. Nice. Surely we win. Uh <laughs> oh, that's so sad. I mean, I guess whatever, but all right. Now we have a two-card hand, boys. This is a two-card hand. Min raise? All right, $20. Raise, raise to the minimum. Hmm, hello there. What shall we make it? One thirty. One. Now, we saw this guy fold to small re-raises in the past. It's true, we did. One forty. I think that's not too big. Not too small. Hopefully it's like Little Red Riding Hood levels of just right. Nice. Run the cards, dealer. Okay. That's less good, but, you know. King ball? That's fine. King ball? <laughs> I'll ask twice? Nice. King ball. Hello. That's why you ask them nicely, boys. That's why you ask them nicely right there. You know, this has been a good session to teach you guys the lesson of tenacity. You know, this has been, uh, let's say, if lessons, if lessons were arrows and run it up and YouTube were the quiver, the lesson that I've fired your way is the lesson of tenacity. You know, I could have quit. I could have just said, I'm out of here. 
I'm taking my $500 and wow, this guy runs twice. Wow, if he loses twice with Ace X flopping an Ace, obviously this one's a lot harder for him to lose. Uh, somewhat harder for him to lose, but all right, there he goes. You bink that damn bell, sir. That's right. I will bink that damn bell. Um, anyway, that was it. That's what happened. I took the tenacity lesson out of the quiver and just fired it right in your face. That's right. That's what I did. That's the replay for you guys that missed it at home. That's right. Don't quit. Just say, you know what? We'll grind it out. Don't worry about that. <laughs> He's had enough. He's had enough fun. I've got it in with Asex too many times today. Now, two sevens is a pretty good hand here. I gotta say, two sevens seems like a pretty good hand. It seems like the worst hand I raise and don't fold for value, right? This seems like the worst hand that I raise and then don't fold if he was gonna go to war with me. This surely is going to go three ways. There's no chance he calls a pot size bet and just folds now. He could raise, but there's no chance he folds now, in my opinion. I, I would be beyond flummoxed if he folded. Very close to flopping quads, but not quite. Okay, what to do, what to do. Let's bet. I think this is a good place to start. Uh, with any luck, we'll have this either see a turn for 110 or... I guess if he shoves, we just fold, you know, whatever. This was a totally fine result. I'll take it. Now we're very close to being unstuck. I think we were in for 1751, if I'm if I remember correctly. I could always look at my balance because I know what my balance was. All right, sorry about that. I somehow turned off the recording and thought I wasn't recording the whole time and freaked out momentarily, but it only went off for like two minutes there. So uh, we missed a couple hands, but nothing too exciting. In this hand, I raised button and got called by the big blind, who then bet out on this flop, and I called for 20. Uh, so here we are on the turn. I think I'm actually going to raise it up for value. Uh, you know, obviously, sometimes we value cut ourselves, but... Uh, I think we get paid often enough by like the six sevens, the jack tens, the you know, the, I guess that's close to it, the ace eights of the world. Uh, at this point, we have a decision between uh, betting and checking back, but I think I just like betting. I feel like we'll sometimes get paid by worse. Nice. Hello. Hello. Nice little value bet right there. Threaded the needle. I was a little worried when he let out twice. I mean, like, worried that we he could just have a queen, but I still think that we win that often enough. So this has been a bizarre session. For you guys, you guys have seen me play for two, like, 30-minute sessions just about. I think I've started, I think I've been playing for two hours in actuality. And I've, I've tried to, this, this has been the, a very weird recording session for me. Things haven't been working. Things are like phantom, like turning off. It's like really kind of bizarre. But the good news is I'm about even. If I win this pot, I think I'll actually be up, which would mean, I think actually if I win this pot, I'd be up a dollar. Oh my God, please fold. Now that I've realized that, please. <laughs> All right. Seems fine. I, I I really shouldn't have said that till after it was over. I kind of jinxed it, I think. Uh, so there's that. This has been a bizarre session. Uh, I I feel like uh, I thought there was no chance we we're going to get even. I was going to just quit down, whatever, and then we just stuck to it. We had the stick to itiveness to get through it. And uh, here we are. Tenacity. That's right. Tenacity Tuesdays, although I think it's Wednesday. I can't. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to know what day of the week it is in the bizarre land over there. It's too much. Let's play one more orbit for the fans. See if we can win $130, and then I am calling it a day. Is it? I've I've went to a pawn shop today. Didn't sell nothing. You know myself. Didn't sell nothing. Went to a, went to a pawn shop. Uh, ate some pizza. Had some pretty good pizza at Aria actually. Came out, came out here, tried to record some roundup episodes. I think we recorded two roundup episodes, but could have just talked to myself for two hours. We'll see. That's, you know, possible. This guy's taking forever. Just posts and just max tanks because, you know, that's cool. This is max tank. Yeah. I'm going to give this guy a color. What's an annoying color? What's the most annoying color to give this guy? Purple? Purple is royal, like Roman. Lakers, you know? I don't like you know, yellow is not yellow. Yellow could be yellow. I like yellow. Yellow is an annoying color. You deserve it, bud. Sorry, bro. Next time, pay attention to what you're doing with your life. You just burned ten dollars. Burned them. Unless he gets back in just in time to raise, but that would be quite silly. So what's new with you? That's cool. Really? Esmeralda said what?
Anyway, back to this poker. Back to this poker game. Hopefully. All right. Maybe we should have. And maybe this was the sign that we should have ended it at the end of last orbit. I should have just won with the queen six. He should have just folded. I would have just quit. We would have been up a dollar. Could have called it a day. No. Not allowed. For to be fair, plenty of other sites have the same amount of time offered. It's not like an ultimate thing, you know. I, I have seen many places offer similar tanks to people who are disconnected. But, uh, very long disconnect, disconnected. <sighs> making you earn, making this guy earn it. All right, on to the next one. Thank God. Four more hands. Four more hands. Would love to call here if he'll let me. Money beats. How do you feel about that limp? Yes? No? Oh, no, please. <laughs> okay. As long as you act. I don't care what you do. Just act quickly. I wish I had put 30 in knowing that everybody calls, but okay. I guess $25 saved right there. Three more hands left, and then uh, we'll call this hey, we'll call this game a session here. Tomorrow we'll be back running it up with uh, something run it up bankroll related. I feel like uh, I think I'm gonna keep playing one tabling sessions for a little bit. We did some two tabling sessions earlier. I want to do some more two tabling stuff, but uh, I kind of like the one tabling feel of things. Excuse me. I think tomorrow, if I can record a little bit more, I definitely will. And uh, you know we're not we're not so far disconnected from video to real time that if you guys want to see something, a lot of you guys had asked me for heads up sit and goes. Heads up sit and goes are tough because you know I basically play what's running when I sit down. So uh, if heads up sit and goes are running, I'll play them. Like there was a sit and go running earlier. I, obviously, I played that yesterday. So I'll do my best to play whatever whatever it is that's running. You know, uh, I most often, like I said, just play whatever is running. Today I was five ten. So there's that. So whatever you guys want to see, definitely let me know. I'll take that into account where I can. And if you have any questions, don't forget, you can ask me about any of the hands in specific videos on the runup.com forums. There are threads for every single new video over on the strategy discussion. And I'm going to do my best to uh, respond to people in those within like the first, especially while the videos are live at least, you know, but within the first week of the videos going up. So if you have specific hand, specific hand questions or you're looking for feedback, stuff like that, make a post in the forum. If you don't hear from me for a day or so, send me a, shoot me a tweet and say, yo, Jay Carves, uh, I made a post in the forum and you said you'd read it. Hello. And uh, if I'm not too busy, I will definitely go to it and do that. Oh. Top two against bottom trips, huh? Sorry, Flurry. You got one one last hand to take my money back, and then I'm out of here. I am out of here. Ooh, okay, this is it. This is it. We need to make uh, $150 this hand. Then we'll be even. That's the that's the even point. Ooh. So you're saying there's a chance. 50? Forty? I know I'm not checking. That's all I know. Fifty seems fine. I bet you one Xbox game. Heavily discounted. <laughs> Somewhat discounted. <laughs> Xbox game. Uh bet again? I think that seems like a cool thing to do. Let's bet a lot. Let's bet one fifty. A hundred more than the first flop bet. We could have hands that are just like A seven. Okay. Run the cards, dealer. Hopefully he doesn't have seven eight. Let's see. Okay. All right. Okay. <coughs> Profit. Hello. Welcome to Profit Village. Population me. Oh, a sweet $500 right now. That's not too bad. I can't quit because I have a policy that I just can't sit out on somebody when I stack them. So you guys get an extra three hands there. Four hands with this one. So uh, I guess we'll run it a little bit longer today. Run it longer. Extra lap for the fans. Hello. <laughs> I don't even know where I got that hello thing from, but I, I do it all the time. And I, I feel like I hate myself half the time that I say it, and the other half the time I think it's hilarious. So we'll see how long it lasts for. Ace queen in the small blind. Looks like we have another chance to maybe make even more money. If it goes limp or raise, I'm going to re-raise. If he folds, I'm re-raising him. If, he, if they both fold, I'm probably going to open against Flurry. I think those are basically the options that are going to occur here. If money beats raises the limp, I'm certainly going to come after this. This seems like a great spot to attack here. 
Um, I think uh, let's make it uh, 100. 110. Something like that seems fine. I don't want him to fold hands like ace-4 suited, ace-8 suited, king-queen, queen-jack. Like, you know, oh, this is cool. This is actually great. If he shoves, I would fold. But nope, run the cards, dealer. Free rolling. Nice. I guess I'm not quitting this lap either. Oh, I got a sweat of 5-4 or a king. Nice. That's why you don't quit, boys. Oh, this is going to be a super extended megasode. High stakes megasode. Because I guess I'll play for a whole other orbit unless Flurry just says no thank you. Okay. Ace Queen again. All right. So it's been a fun session. Somehow we ended up up a thousand this session. I thought we were going to end down 1500 for sure, but somehow we ended up winning a thousand dollars. I feel like. There were some cool hands this session. There were some pretty cool hands, I think. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the journey with me. I wish this was run out of money, but unfortunately not. <laughs> it's just Jay Carver money. Nothing wrong with Jay Carver money, though. I need money, too. Shit's expensive, yo. It's true. So, if it was heads up, I would bet for sure. The fact that it isn't heads up makes me a little hesitant. A little. But not very, because I still think this guy is going to call us pretty often with just an ace or a diamond, something like that. Let's bet half pot, see what happens. I think he'll call. Maybe he won't. If he raises, I guess we fold. Okay, this is interesting. All right, that was not interesting at all, ultimately. But I thought it could be. Uh, is this it? Is this the last hand? I, I, did, I did one more orbit through. Even though the guy quit, I still felt bad about just, like, you know, insta-leaving, so... Let's see a flop with the Jack-9 offsuit. You guys get just an extra special episode today. 45 minutes or however long this episode is. I don't even know how long this episode is. It's just going on forever, though. It's good, though. I'll let it go on forever when I make, like, 1,000 an hour. That seems okay. I guess it's 500 an hour, technically, but still. Uh, I guess we just fold. I guess there's not really much of a reason to get, get involved because we're just quitting in two hands anyway. All right, last two hands for the fans, unless I, bu I bust somebody else. <laughs> and this could just go on forever. This could just be the run-up episode that never ends. Uh, 60 seems like a good size to make it in position here with a hand as pretty as King-7 of diamonds. If the big blind wants the cold call, he can if he really wants to. If he wants to call, he can as well. If he wants to four-bet us, I'm fine with that. We're not folding given as deep as we are and good as good as our hand is unless he makes it like 240. If he makes it 210, I'm still going to call. Ha <laughs> ha No way. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. Good start for us. Hopefully we don't end up against a hand like Ace-King or 210s. But it seems like a good start. He's betting small, which is good news for us, I guess, for not losing an enormous pot. Could raise or something, but I think calling seems like the way the way to go. As a less than pretty turn card, might go check check. Happens sometimes when he just has like you know jacks, queens, ten jack. You know, although he made a pretty small pre, he could definitely have like ace jack, ace queen, you know, uh, king queen, something like that. He definitely can have those kinds of hands. Could have like I don't think he has ace ten too often, but he could definitely have hands like ace king stuff like that. Got to call one more time though. Very interesting river. Very interesting river. Hmm. Hmm. What a hand to end the session on. Okay, so let's talk about this out loud a little bit. I think that he has to expect us to have a king here pretty often. He could have a flush sometimes. He could have a full house here. That's what he's representing. Ace-king, ace-ace, 10-10. Ten, ten. King-10, ten, doubt it. Rear-ace, pre-flop, don't think so. Could have the rest of those hands, though. Aces, kings, not kings. Aces, ace-king, or 10s all make sense. Could have some flushes, you know, but not too many. Like Queen Jack of Spades, so you know, that's that's probably about it. I think he could have King Queen, Queen Jack. Oh, uh, sorry, King Jack. Could have Queen Jack, but that also seems like uh, it could be. We're getting uh, over two to one, so we have to win this pot like thirty percent of the time, something like that. I don't think we do. I really don't think we do. Nice end. That was a fun one. That's a fun one. That's a fun one to go out on. 
Flurry comes back, but we are we are out. Well, we will be out, maybe. <laughs> oh, the session is gonna go on forever. The session that never ends. That's fine, whatever. It's been fun. We've had some really fun hands in the last few orbits for the fans. This has been the best for the fans orbits that I think we've ever had in all run that up history. It's been uh, it's been something, that's for sure. Man, what a fun what a fun hand that was. What an interesting river. I think a seven is actually way less interesting because we still lose to Ace King. Uh, but he probably doesn't shove with hands like Ace King, and like you know, he has to play certain hands differently on a seven. Whereas the King of Spades is like super interesting river. It's like okay, so he has King Queen. Does he shove that hand? I don't know. Ace King definitely could play the hand exactly the way he played it. Four bet pre and uh, four bet pre and play how he did post flop. So really interesting hand. If uh, money beats, if you're a uh, run up fan and uh, want to tell me you bluffed me, I would love to know. Really cool hand anyway. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode today. I'll be back with more tomorrow. I'm not going to do a full screen wrap up because uh, we've had plenty of uh, show for the day. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you back for more tomorrow. Peace. How do you guys like my Waldo shirt today? King Six Offsuit? We're finished. That's right. Get out of here. Oh, you said you had Top Top. I did have Top Top. It's true. I actually had Top Two Top. Top Top Two. I thought I was a college student with a gambling problem. But turns out I was a gambler with a college problem. It's a party. It's a party.